Hello, welcome to episode 177 in this series where I am programming an NES game, at least ostensibly live on stream, although it's been a while. Um, for those of you who missed it, I was at Portland Retro Gaming Expo. I did get to meet uh, a few very cool people from uh, the Collector's Quest podcast um, and uh, from their Discord, uh, which uh, I am on uh, as a game collector. I like I like the podcast. I like the people in the Discord, so I do tend to gravitate to there. And uh, they were they were going to be at Portland, and I wanted to go to Portland, so um, I figured, you know what, it's now or never. And so I went. And uh, while I was there, I did do a live two live streams. Um, I think it's a total of. I take a look. I want to say it was a total of like three hours, maybe. I don't remember how long it was. Yeah, it was almost three hours of me messing around with programming um, in C for the NES. Oh, and then Lost Joystick Network had to uh, make sure that I mentioned them uh, because, you know... It's not enough that I like one podcast. I, I, I do like multiple podcasts. Uh, actually, no, Lost Joystick Network is a great podcast. Um, if you do not listen to them, uh, but you enjoy retro gaming, you should definitely listen to their podcast. Uh, very, very funny. Uh, very entertaining. They know their stuff. And, uh, and it's great. They do a live stream, too, on Wednesdays starting at 9 Eastern. And... Uh, you know, if you can catch that, it's fun. A lot of good people in the chat. And then uh, and then if not, you can, you know, listen to it on uh, your podcatcher of choice. I like how everybody says podcatcher of choice. Um, as if that's, if is there an app that was called podcatcher? Where did that come from? Or is that just people being like deprecating towards podcasts? And even though everybody makes podcasts. Um, but anyway, so... Um, sadly, none of the people from, uh, Mike and Jay from Lost Joystick Network were not at Portland Retro Gaming Expo. Um, but, uh, Collector, Collector's Quest podcast was there and, uh, a couple other YouTubers and podcasters of note, some good panels. Um, but I did about three hours of streaming programming in, uh, for the NES and C, uh, if you want to check that out, it, it was, um, it was an interesting experience. It was interesting to see the difference in, um, w what you could do with a relatively small amount of code. Um, and I think the biggest trade-off for me really was, uh, I don't, I don't know. I don't like, uh, Midwest gaming classic, you know? There are so many co conventions to go to, um, but I think the the big the biggest thing for me with um, C versus assembly was just that C takes care of a lot of the um, a lot of the stuff around like signed and unsigned and uh, basic operations that aren't part of assembly. So like assembly has add subtract and uh, it has, you know, some compar comparison uh, operators um, or op codes, but but it doesn't have it doesn't have you know a, an actual like simple way of doing greater than less than. It's not hard to do, but it's it's not as simple or, or as straightforward as in C. And then dealing with negatives and positives, you have to be a little bit more aware of it. Um, an assembly because there are no types. You're just dealing with the raw data, and in assemb uh, and in C, you just you know you either say it's signed or not, and then and then you're kind of off to the races, which is which is good. I, you know I like that part, but um, you know otherwise it's like you're still programming for the NES, so you still have to do things. Um, you still have to be mindful of how long your code takes to execute, uh, in between NMI, you still have to make sure that you're not trying to do too much in NMI, 
uh, and because you run the risk of running out of cycles and having weird uh, graphical glitches in your code. Um, but also the code is more compact. So if that's something for you where you find that you're not, you don't comment your code well and you have a hard time and we've had this problem even here in this code where i've come back and been like whoa what was i doing and i've had to like reread through the assembly and kind of like step through what i was doing and then i would go back and you know add a block of comments because um because it was it was really sort of complex and it wasn't clear why i was doing it just from the code C is definitely easier for that. Um, at least it seemed that way for me. Um, maybe because I'm still way more familiar with C programming than I am assembly programming. Maybe it's because assembly is way more verbose and you end up, you know, having to read through a lot more instructions to get to the, the meat of what it is you're, you're trying to do. Um, I'm trying to find a good example of a place where I put in a pretty big chunk of yeah so I mean you know I have little things like this but I know there are definitely places where I had very very long I mean you can see here I made sure to include a bunch of comments to kind of walk through what's happening and why um, and it's purely just because, you know, there's a lot of little minutia steps here in terms of doing like multiplications and stripping off uh, remainders in the operations that we're doing. And that's one thing where I think C is definitely clearer. I don't, I don't want to say better, but it's definitely clearer, right? You definitely get a, a code that is um, more quickly understandable. Um, an interesting exercise might be like once this code is done and working, how long would it be to port the assembly to C? And then like, what are the differences in the code and performance? But who knows if we'll do that. Um, anyway, I'm kind of rambling here, but the, the main thing is, like I said, that the, you know, it was an interesting exercise. Um, I wanted to do that for the nest dev compo, but, uh, I ran into sort of a unexpected challenge that I hadn't considered in what I was trying to build, which was that there there's more physics than I was expecting in the motion of a an object on water. And when you say it like that, it's obvious. But like when you just think about, okay, I'm going to make a thing and you're going to use the controller to move it and it's going to be a boat and it's going to be on water you know, you don't really think about that too much, but then when you think about wanting it to control in a semi-realistic way, like the dynamics of the boat moving on the water, um, I mean, you wouldn't simulate that completely realistically because it's probably almost definitely too complex for the NES CPU to do the real physics calculations, but I hadn't really been able to spend the time to come up with a, a good approximation. Um, so maybe, maybe for next year. Um, all right. So let's talk about the bug that I found. Um, yeah. So I was using this controller to test out uh, how it would work with Messin and discovered a weird sort of problem where oh I was playing with filters also let me turn that off so discovered a weird problem if I uh, just fast forward to where there are some enemies flying through um, so what I noticed is as I was shooting enemies the ship would explode and I wasn't sure if it was because of bad, um, some sort of bad detection on the part, the projectiles. Yeah, see, like I didn't hit anything there, but the ship exploded. 
And if I don't shoot, it's not like they're... Oh, wait, no, see, there there might be something in the map. That was what I was going to say. I'm, I was, wasn't sure if it was there was some, something from the projectile perspective that's bad, or if there's something in uh, way back towards the beginning of when we started this project... Um, I had implemented some background collision in um, in the map, and I'm wondering if that's what we're hitting. So let's take a look at if that's the case. I think what I'll probably do is um, disable that for now because I don't actually know if we're going to need it anymore. We can we can always put it back on so Mac map object check um, so what we can do for now is I think what I'll do is I'm just going to disable this and we'll see if that stops this from happening. Oh good, the build script still works. All right. And the thing is, it seems to be like random, but it just also happens to kind of coincide with areas where the enemies scroll into place. Um, maybe because I was moving in a particular area, but we'll see. I, I don't know if that's actually what it is or if it's the enemy logic causing some sort of collision that's not real. Oops, I went way too far. Wait a minute, what, what just happened? Where are the enemies? Did I take them out of the map and then... Is that the wrong... Is that, is that not actually what that does? Map object check. I got a little ahead of myself. This is checking to see if it should load an enemy, not um, the collision. Continue objects. All right, so we're, there's a spot where it specifically checks the map collision. Hope everybody's having a good night. I uh, plan on keeping this a little bit short just because I was up way too late and the night before and uh, just messing around with um, stuff here. I got a new component video switch. Um, found it really cheap online. Somebody recommended the, the brand to me and I they just happened to some someone just happened to be selling um, a um, an eight by eight component switch, so eight input, eight output, and and it can do simultaneous eight output. Um, and uh, so the where is that used? Um, and so I wanted to make sure it was using the latest firmware and it was not. And uh, because it's pretty old, I can't spell. Because it's pretty old, it um, uses serial cable to communicate with PC or Mac. So I had to use serial to send the ADK firmware file at uh, 9600 baud which took about 45 minutes um, and unfortunately I started it relatively late not realizing it was going to take that long 
first I thought it wasn't working at all, and then I thought I bricked the thing, but nope, it was just slow because 9600 baud is garbage. All right, so this is the code. Check player collision with map. Process collision. So this is checking load background mode, compare to repeat scroll, branch of equal to skip collision. All right, so this is where what we want to do, we want to skip this code. So I'm going to put a little thing here. Um, we'll just put it to do this permanently. Skips. Background collision checks. Enable this if we want it back. Right. So we should get enemies back again, and we should hopefully not have that weird crash happen anymore. Did it not reload the ROM? I thought. Okay, good. Um, so I'm just fast forwarding because the map is kind of slow uh, to move with no enemies in the beginning section to kind of make it interesting. Here are some enemies. Right, so it was like right around this area here that I was seeing the ship collide and explode for no reason. And it seems like we're good. And then this is the repeat scroll section where it just repeats the background a bunch of times before we um, go back to, uh, before we go back to um, the map level again. And then what we had done in the last stream I don't know when that was, but yeah, see how it stopped like that? That was something we had implemented in the last stream so that, you know, like you get to the end of the level where the boss is and you, you're you in this section and you're, you're firing away at the boss and either you die and have to start over or you progress to the next level. So, all right, so we're, we're good with that. That was what the issue was with that weird collision. I just don't want, I want to double check that, but I think that's, that's gotta have been it. Um, we'll try firing some more projectiles at the enemies just to double check that. Cause I know it was definitely kind of opening fire on enemies to test that out and make sure that was working. Um, and so there was part of me that was wondering if like my own bullets were somehow interacting with the player object to cause that collision, but it definitely looks like it was background, um, the background collision. And, and the thing with that is I don't even remember, I don't even know if we're generating the right data for that anymore. So that, that could be why we're getting these random crashes. I think it's probably that it was, pulling data out of the ROM, uh, just the raw binary of the ROM, um, causing that. So, all right, so we've got that turned off. Now, here's the thing, like I was talking about, we've got these two repos. Um, and I know this is not the most uh, exciting necessarily, but um, I want to, I want to merge these two things so that we only have one and then this way i've got the one repo that is shared by the people who want access to the code um, by doing the pre-order but i need to make sure that i'm doing it in a way where i'm not including there are a bunch of um files that get generated by the uh what's it called by the uh, export tool and uh, I don't want those included in 
what we um, in what we uh, put into the repo. Yeah, see, I'm already getting tired here. Like I said, I'm I'm was up way too late on this nonsense. So we can see the entity includes and any logic tables. We don't want it. We don't need those uh, level constants. I think those are generated to the easiest way to know for sure is to go to the export tool. So we'll just exclude any file that gets created as part of that process that that isn't like a named file just to you know ensure or try to ensure that we're not accidentally including those things and then um once i have that kind of stitched up we should be able to <clears throat> we should be able to just kind of uh abandon this old one and uh, move directly to uh, just the new one so that that's all up to date. So let's see. So this, let's take a look at this here. We have a bunch of files. So we have turret.asm. These are, I guess I can include all the entities that are like, Now, see, I'm missing a few like pretty important files, like the projectile ASM file is defining the structure for the projectile. That's not, I haven't committed that. So let's, let's do this. We're going to take the entities. We're going to take that. We're going to stage those. And level data ASM, I don't think that's what we want to do yeah so we don't want that one so we can actually add that to the git ignore why is that not I promise we'll get more into some of the actual um, development here again in the next stream. I, the plan is to the plan is to stream. Uh, well, let's talk about that in a second. I don't want to try and do too many things at once here because I'm just not. Um, my brain is not functioning at a high enough level right now to to be able to do that. So level data to ASM, we don't care. Um, we don't want to include that. Level constants, that is generated, right? Let's see. No, it's not. So that needs to be included. Entity logic tables. This is definitely generated. So just trying to um, make sure we don't accidentally include these files. And then this way, I know that I will safely be working on this and including all the latest updates to the repo and I can commit more frequently. Um, and I don't have to worry about any, any content getting out there that shouldn't. All right. We can look at that in a little bit. All the rest of this stuff, all the rest of this stuff looks like it doesn't need to be here in the repo. All right, so these are the staged files. Um, adding missing assembly files and um, updated 
some logic to fix the collision. Well, it's the unexpected random crash caused by Alright, so now I should be able to do this. Oh, well, come on, I fixed this before. I swear. You know, I think I had this problem before and I just forgot. Yeah, for some reason, Source Tree did not does not like to work with the repo remotely. All right, so now that we've got that done, here's the part that we got to take care of. We've got this is the original one. This has got a ton of stuff in here that is just content. And then this is the same thing. Um, where is the stream repo? This is a more stripped down version. This is just literally the sort of engine code. So what we want to do is I want to go back to that commit that we just made and uh, copy over. those files manually. And this is why I want to get rid of this because I, I kept having to do this manually and uh, and obviously I'm missing things and it is dumb to do it this way. So load level. Am I doing it in the right direction? I am. Okay. And process scheme. Shooter.sm. And entities. So let's get player. And then what is the other one? We added a couple other things. Turret. An enemy stream. Okay, and then level constants, that's new, projectile, oh, I can't see it because it's scrolled down to the bottom, that was missing, and then we added the other two entities, okay, so if we go here, should see here are the things that changed and we added I thought we added more than that turret enemy stream and then player got updated stream uh, untracked okay modified stage all it should just match but again this is why doing this manually is dumb um, low level process game and these player and he's turret projectile.asm oh maybe I added it <laughs> that would be funny if I added it to one but not the other um, alright so and then well we can check that in a second alright so um, syncing between 
main repo and shared project to move over to shared. And then I should be able to push this to master. Okay, great. So that's done. So now what I want to do is, in theory, right, so this got, source tree, what are you doing? This was already pushed. the project window. Where's the repo browser? Tools, actions. View, edit file. What am I doing? Oh, it's got it. Okay. Why does it still think Okay, cool, I got rid of that. All right, I just wanted to make sure that that push actually occurred. All right, so. Streamer is the actual GitLab project, which is the shared one. Um, all right, so we, or is it, wait, is it Streamer or is it Shooter? It's gotta be. Okay, it's, yeah, so here's the entities. The entities are, no, not the entities, the assets. That's what I want to, yeah. The assets are what we're, we process to generate the exported data that we need. So in theory, I should just be able to copy this assets folder over. Just want to make sure uh, we don't have modified, untracked. Untracked. Okay, so I want to copy the git ignore so that that matches. Okay, great. So let me, did it not? Oh, interesting, it's not, get ignore is being ignored. Kind of want that to be included. I don't, I don't mind that being in the repo. I'll just, <clears throat> I'll just do that for both. So this one I'm not gonna be able to commit, but that's okay. Or I'm not gonna be able to push it. I'll try one more time. No? Okay. That's fine. And then this one I can do the commit and the push. Hey Matt, how's it going? All right, push this again. All right, cool. So that's taken care of now. All right, so now let's just double check that when we try and do the export of the assets here that this actually works with the export tool. Um, and then assuming that that does, we're actually in pretty good shape to move forward. And I wanna talk about what that actually means and um, what the plan is to get this game done. So let's close this 
repo. Let's go to what will now be the main repo. Uh, yeah, I trust myself for better or for worse. All right. So now this is this. I should be able to build. No. Okay. Um, make file. I gotta install the make file extension. No, I just wanna. How did I do this before? I thought it was just a current task, gulp task. I just wanna run. I did this so long ago that I don't remember how I configured the task. Hey, guess what? I can just steal it. All right, that's what we're gonna do. I'm just gonna steal the task for myself because why not? Okay, build, no rule. Right, okay, we don't have any of the assets built. That's fine. What we wanna look at is the JSON file the asset tool will export. So it is streamer assets shooter.json assets. Oh, is it? Oh, that's interesting. So it's ignoring it from here too, excuse me. All right, I just wanna check the paths and make sure. Yeah, see this is these are absolute paths. I'm not crazy about that, but for now, for tonight, we'll, we'll just fix this to make sure this works. All right, so now I should be able to just run the export process. And now in the assets export folder these are all modified today so if i go back to here and i paste this let me overwrite those or add the things that are missing when i do the build hmm shooter.chr is that a Is that a fixed? That might be a fixed CHR. Oh, because it has the title screen and stuff like that. All right, I don't mind including that in the in the uh, the repo to make this part work. Um, Although I guess it doesn't really need to be. I just want to see what this is. Yeah, okay, it's just the uncompressed title screen. Copy that over. All right, so now what? What do we got? Entity.asm. Well, interesting. All right, so here are some files that we forgot to include in moving things over, which is which is totally fine. I mean, this is these are the things that I was expecting to see. Um, so it's I, I don't mind that this is broken. I'm just we're just gonna have to kind of figure out. How to resolve them, and in most cases, it's just I think going to be copying files over. Title screen bin Title screen ink player collision.
Yeah, see, these are, these are all pretty old files, which means that they're not being generated by the export process. So um, in some cases, I think they're probably even, you know, like I'm not sure how good they even are just because like they're like the player collision data points. I guess they're probably okay. Like collision seems fine, but um, it's not... Uh, we haven't really looked at that closely in a long time. So scrolling pause, then player ism. Scrolling paused. Is that in, like globals or something? No, we had some sort of like, there was constants. I don't think that's where it is. Clear, um, scrolling paused. I think there was a file that was like our global data. And I don't remember what that was called. Is it actually in the camera file? No, that's just the camera. Level constants, header. What is this? That's just the header file. Well, data. Nope. Macros. Hmm. Let's just uh, load this up for a sec here and see what is going on. Let's get a new window going. Recent that's Should we just drag this in, right? So it's scrolling paused. <clears throat> that's in shooter.sm. I thought I Three twenty-seven. Sure. Dot SM. All right. So that's not up to date. It's weird because I thought I copied it over. Although it didn't. Just there we go. Didn't complain that I was overwriting it. So. I guess not. Um, all right, cool. So that actually built. So if we go to this NES file that we just built here, oh, my controller turned off. It's like, oh no, I broke it. Nope, it's saving battery power. Okay, cool. So we're back in a building state, which means that what we can do is go to this repo and let's see what got fixed. So this, and then untracked. Um, okay, that needed to be there. And nothing else. All the rest of it was really untracked. In the get ignore. Entity logic tables, entity includes, you know what, entity includes, that is not, I don't think that's automatically generated. Let's double check. It's not, okay, so that's a manual file. So that actually needs to be brought in. All right, let's do that. This is generated automatically as part of the work that we had done with um, the jump tables that we implemented a, a while back. All right, so um, if 
fixed missing code and missing files so we can actually build from this source. Okay, stage. Commit and push. Excuse me. All right. So let's take a look. Um, I'll do this real quick. Get lab. Streamer. Okay. So. Okay, great. So this definitely worked. Um, sorry for not showing it on screen. There are a few projects in here I don't want to show yet um, for other things. And also, I just uh, don't want to share that info unless I need to. So, all right. So, good. We're in a good situation there. All right. So... Let's pull up the map. Oh yeah, this was a test we were doing. All right, so where are we with all of this? Um, we're not that much further. I know in one of the previous streams I had talked about, you know, possibly working on things off stream. Um, but, you know, I spent all this time and all these hours uh, working on the project on stream, it seemed kind of dumb to suddenly throw that out the window. Um, although it didn't also help that things were just very busy from, um, from the last time I streamed. Let's see, when was that? The last time I did a stream, I think was back in, I want to say April. What was the date on that stream? No, it was January. So that was a really long time ago and it's just been very busy. Um, and part of it is I'm not making uh, enough time. Um, and so for any of you who have been waiting for the project to be completed or thought that the project was dead, um, I'm sorry about that. That wasn't my intent, and um, it's still going to be completed. Um, but I just need to kind of get back into the groove of things. It's been a long, a long project, but also literally, like I said, when I started this, I was planning on and and only did work on it on stream, right? So what you saw was literally the only time I was working on it, with a few exceptions for things like the the, the export tool back in the beginning of the streams, um, I guess that was 2018. Um, so it's really not that much time and it's really kind of made it difficult to progress at a speed that feels like I'm making any sort of appreciable effort that coupled with the fact that, as I've mentioned, um, I feel, uh, frustrated with my inability to design, uh, game levels, um, you know, as, as well or as quickly as I want to, um, kind of made it hard to pick up even when I did have some time, um, which again, there wasn't much of, so it wasn't like I was missing out on too much, but there was definitely more time than, uh, than I allotted in the last 10 months. So moving forward, I want to get back to, um, doing streaming, uh, I'm not going to, I don't think I'm going to have a schedule like I did before of Monday, Thursday only. Um, but we'll see the plan right now is even if I just stream because, uh, so incidentally, like I was listening to Matt, um, on the dev bites episode of the assembly line podcast. If you haven't heard those episodes, by the way, you should definitely go listen to them. They're really good. It's not necessarily as, um, it's not the same as when it's Bo and Kevin, although there was an episode with Bo and Kevin. Um, but, uh, but you know, good content there nonetheless, but he was talking about how, you know, he just finds some time, uh, whenever he can either, you know, in the evening or, 
or whatever, you know, and just, you know, goes through it. Right. And, and I was thinking about all the times that I wanted to, but it, because it wasn't like a stream day, I couldn't. Um, so while on the one hand, the streaming, um, was an effective tool to ensure that I continued to work on the project. Um, it also had the adverse effect of, um, stopping me from working on the project because I wanted to stick to a schedule. Um, but I realized, you know what, the schedule isn't really that important because, um, I'm not here to monetize this stream. Um, I'm not here to try and trick the Twitch algorithm into, uh, promoting these streams or the YouTube algorithm to promoting these streams. The whole point of this was to document the creation of the game and, um, and also to, um, motivate me to continue work on it. So, um, Hey, look, a bot. Uh, let's see. How do I, you block block. All right. Oops. No, I don't want to pin that. What are you talking about? All right, and then let's also report spam next. Um, spam next. What else do you want me to say? It's spam. Advertising unwanted service in stream. Go away. Just, just get rid of it, please. And it still didn't get rid of it. What? How do I? Oh my God. Why is this user interface so terrible? Totally disrupted my chain of thought. And now I've got this dumb message here. Um... here. There we go. Now you're banned. <sighs> anyway, as I was saying, um, I'm not trying to do this to monetize this channel. I'm doing it to document the work, um, and be useful to anybody who wants to see what's involved in making an NES game and assembly. Um, and it doesn't really serve um, anybody if I don't finish the project, right? Like, it's one thing if it's going to take me another year to do it. But um, if I just stop the project, I mean, other than kind of uh, feeding into, like, that statistic of, <laughs> of dead projects, right? Like, with podcasts and stuff like that. It doesn't really help as much as I want it to. So, plan is, um, whenever I want to work on it, I'm going to stream it. I'm going to record it. Um, I'm going to try and do it in regular fashion so that people can catch the streams. I know people liked to be able to ask questions um, when uh, they were on stream, um, but people have no issue reaching out and uh, asking questions on the recordings on YouTube. Um, and I'm happy to answer those questions um, try to get to them almost immediately because I don't want to forget. So that's the plan. I'm going to move forward. I'm going to stream whenever I can. I'm going to make sure to post the recordings and we're going to get this done. Um, and, um, you know, the level design, you're just going to have to bear with me. It's going to be rough at first and it's going to be crappy, but hopefully that will not be reflective of the end level design. It's just going to be a matter of, me putting something together and refining it and playing through these levels over and over again. And, um, you know, I think that'll be useful for people to see too, because it's pretty rare that you ever like people talk about level design and you can see, you know, the sort of quintessential level design discussion about like perfect level design is Super Mario Brothers 1 1, right? People talk about how that's a perfect platformer level because it teaches you everything you need to know about how to play that game in the first level, right? Which is cool. It's a great design. But like how many iterations of that level did they go through before they they did that? And was it 
intentional or was it just like they hit upon that by iterating and being like no this is too hard no this is too easy right like they and i think that that process is interesting and i want to show that part of the process so is that going to spoil the game for people i don't know i don't think so um i think people who enjoy shmups are going to want to play it even if they see how it was put together um i be curious what other people think. Let me know what you think, but that's that's the plan. So um, I'm just rambling here because I'm tired. And um, like I said, I wanted to keep this one short. I just wanted to do I just wanted to do a stream to kick things off again. So look for more streams. I'll be posting them on Twitter. And if Twitter implodes, I have a, an account on mastodon also it is um let's see i believe it is at clervis at oh i don't know their their whole thing of splitting up the servers just does not make it easy for me to remember i wish chrome would stop doing this um it is at clervis at mastodon.social um, and then also, um, I have a link tree, uh, as the, as the, um, guys at the, fir at the law, I can't speak lost joystick network, like to refer to it. It's a, it's a linkter.ee and that's a clervis and all my stuff is there. Um, so I will continue to update this for links to things. Um, you know, as, as social media nonsense changes, so too will my, uh, my link tree so that you can find me if you need to ask questions. Um, and then what was the last thing? Oh yeah. And like I said, so the whole point of what we were doing with the repos today is so that now I'm working out of the same repo that's shared if you pre-order the game. So if you pre-order the game and you want to see the core engine code, um, you're going to see it in real time as I am committing the changes now, instead of, you know, going for two or three or four months, or in this case, a little bit longer than that, um, where the code is not synced up, uh, because I was working in two different repos. So hopefully that will be helpful for people who want to follow along with that. Have a good evening. See you all soon. Um, Hope to see you again soon on stream. Uh, thanks for, for those of you who joined. And uh, thanks for th those of you who are continuing to watch back episodes that you missed and ask questions. Uh, I definitely appreciate it. And I hope that the info I provide has been helpful. So with that, have a good night. See you on the next one.